Welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about something completely new and original. Half-frame photography. Since 2022 started, I feel that half-frame photography has been coming up in conversation a lot more across the internet. With prices rising on all film stocks, I can see the appeal of uh, half-frame photography. It basically doubles your film life expectancy, like you get twice as many shots now. As well as the announcement of Kodak's Ektar H35, the new plastic half-frame camera, it's kind of been keeping the spirit of half-frame photography alive and just keeping the conversation going, I guess. For me, half-frame photography has kind of been always an interesting thing to take on. I'm not really an avid uh, user of half-room cameras. I used to own an Olympus Pen F and I liked it. I thought it was a really well-built uh, camera. It was really fun to use, but I never found myself picking it up. So after owning it for about a year and not really shooting too much of it, I kind of just sold it and moved on. A little later down the line though, I ended up going to an estate sale and I found this uh, Olympus Pen D3 and I thought it was just a nice little camera. I like the shape. I like the build quality. It's nice and heavy and metal. Also with an aperture of 1.7, it's a 32 millimeter lens. You can't really complain. And for the price they were asking for, I think it was like 20 bucks I think it was. I just said screw it and bought it. After purchasing this camera though, I didn't really use it that much. I kind of just like let it sit on the shelf. So I thought today would be a good day to go test it out, especially with the conversation being so frequent right now with half room photography. I had some errands I needed to run in Seattle, mostly buying some more film, but I thought it'd be fun to kind of go around and shoot with this little Pen D3 and kind of see what I could capture. My day kind of started over at Dick's Hamburgers. It's a little burger chain in the, the Seattle area, and if you're ever visiting, I highly recommend it. It's pretty damn good. After eating my lunch, I kind of shot a few photos in and around the building, and uh, this is where my uh, problems began. I didn't know this at the time, but this camera has some light leaks in it. I'm not too sure if it's the back plate being loose or if it needs new light seals, but I'm not too sure what's causing it, but it's something that's going to need to be addressed, whether or not that's just basically wrapping it with gaff tape. but. Yeah, there's going to be some light leaks on this uh, on this video, so uh, enjoy. So at this point, I made my way over to Pike Place Market. I'm not a frequent shooter at Pike Place. I like going there. I like exploring, but it's never really, um, it's never really drawing me to it. Like it's great for street photography. It's great to capture like people just doing their normal, like basically shopping and stuff like that. And it's always interesting who's there and like it's always got people working, doing different things. I think it's a really easy area just kind of like post up and capture something interesting if you're into street photography. For me, I'm not a big street photographer, but I thought the Olympus Pen D3 would really shine for street photography. This tiny little camera is so small and inconspicuous that it's kind of just easy to kind of shoot from the hip or even just bring up to your eye and just basically frame everything. And it kind of looks like a toy camera with its size being so small that no one's really getting upset by you taking their photo. It's just kind of like people probably think you're just kind of like a weird tourist. One of my favorite things about half room cameras is the ability to do diptych photography, which is basically taking two images on a single 35 millimeter exposure.
On this trip to Seattle, I was definitely looking for things to kind of work with this diptych photography, but then again, I was also just kind of shooting willy nilly and just kind of like seeing what I could find and just kind of getting out and refreshing myself on like just shooting street photography. I spent most of the day just kind of wandering in and out of the market, exploring the different levels, kind of just kind of winding through different parts I didn't really get to go through. It wasn't that busy of a day, so it was kind of nice to just be able to kind of like move at my own pace, and find some little more unexplored areas. But after a while, it was all kind of like the same and I wasn't really feeling drawn to anything to like keep me shooting there. So I kind of went and did some exploring and I walked down over to the waterfront and stuff like that. I was just kind of just seeing what was being drawn to me. Like I just had an afternoon to myself, so I just kind of wanted to explore and see what else I could find for uh, some imagery. So I was shooting Cinestills 800T, so I wanted something a little brighter, and I knew it was going to be in the Pike Place market. I knew that there's plenty of neon signs there, and I wanted a little bit of that glow. With that being said, uh, I wasn't actually using the meter in the camera, since the camera takes a mercury cell battery, I didn't have one available, or a substitute. So I was actually using a Siconic light meter, so a lot of the time I was trying to use that to help me guess the lighting, and basically when you're shooting indoors, sometimes you can kind of just pick up exclusively the highlights or the shadows, so it took this kind of like half frame photography and really slowed me down. So in the future, I think I would probably purchase a battery for this camera just to kind of speed up my shooting experience, but also kind of like not so I had to be fumbling with so much gear. At the end of the day, I kind of felt like I was rushing through some of these photos, especially at the like second half of the roll. Um, the light was kind of fading pretty quick. Up here in the Pacific Northwest, it starts getting dark around 4 o'clock, and it was already about 2.33, so I knew I wasn't going to have much uh, daylight to help me out, and honestly, it was a cloudy, overcast day, so there wasn't really much there to begin with. So rushing because of the light and kind of fumbling around with the Siconic light meter, a lot of the times when I was shooting, I forgot about basically focusing. The focusing on this camera is, again, it's not one of those mountain tree people, like flower kind of situations. It's, it's 2.6 feet to infinity on the Olympus Pen D3, so it has a pretty wider range of basically focusing styles. I was mostly shooting between like 10 feet and infinity for a lot of things. I didn't really get too close, but sometimes I would set my focus to what I was looking at, but I wouldn't reset it. So that would cause me to have a lot of out of focus 
this uh, imagery because again I felt like I was rushing through this trying to get this done so you're gonna notice that not all of these photos are razor sharp and that's not because the lens isn't razor sharp that just means I'm a bad photographer and I should slow down. At the end of this trip though, I kind of wasn't really feeling confident in what I captured and I was just kind of like, I felt like I had to rush this just to kind of get another video out, which isn't the best thing to do when you're taking photos. It's like you should really be out taking photos that you want to capture, not just kind of doing something to do something. As well as when I got the film back and I noticed that it was just covered in light leaks, I was pretty uh, disheartened. Again, like I had only shot this camera once before and I never knew what the imagery would look like because I did flash the film because the back plate slid off when I was trying to rewind it all in. So this video has been kind of like pretty hard for me. Like I wanted to do something nice and do something fun, but also like I'm working on some bigger videos too. So I wanted something to kind of keep you guys like engaged, but also like I'm not really feeling too happy about this one at the end of the day. But it's a good learning curve that like maybe it's better to take your time with these things and just do the right thing and put out the right like imaging that you want to showcase rather than just doing something at the seat of your pants just to do it. And with those final thoughts, I was originally thinking about getting rid of this camera just because I wasn't happy with my results but I have to kind of maybe step back from that thought process because like it wasn't the camera's fault it was my own fault for basically <laughs> how my images turned out uh yeah you can't blame the equipment if you're not doing the thing right so I think I'm gonna hold on to it I think I'm gonna revisit this camera in the future maybe I think in the summer it could be a really nice little like road trip camera like load it up with some black and white probably some Tri-X or T-Max and or HP5 even and just kind of have it with you and just kind of like keep it in the pocket or just basically when you're not feeling confident that's gonna be a great photo to take on maybe medium format or just a standard 35 just kind of take a snapshot with the pen d3 I think I was being a little too hard on this camera when I was scanning my imagery and when I first started working on this video I wasn't really like happy but after reflecting on it for like a couple days now I realized like it's a very versatile camera it's a razor sharp lens when you get everything in focus and then also with its aperture being able to stop down to f 1.7 along with up to 500th of a second with a bold mode it's as good as any other SLR from the time really but it's just basically like a smaller compact camera and I think it really should basically be like considered if you're looking for a half frame camera again the focusing isn't really my personal favorite and I know it's not a lot of people's favorites people are usually one-sided whether it's SLR style or range finders you don't really encounter many people who are uh, dying on a hill front for zone focusing but if you're out there I want you to know you're absolutely insane I have to say the pen d3 is really great at dick pics I mean diptychs